Destructed at Villa Park, Wimbledon even had the benefit of this dubious offside decision. Dwight York, though, blatantly onside when he finished. The referee's assistant not on the Villa Park Christmas card list. Poetic justice, though, was swift. Sullivan cleared. Kenny Cunningham's back pass enough to send any manager reaching for the Valium. Dwight York accepted the neatly wrapped gift. Joe Kinnear's blood pressure then took another sharp jump. Chris Perry making a mess of the header. Dean Blackwell doing likewise on the tackle. Savo Milosevic accepted the second seasonal offering and suddenly the Dons were in disarray. Villa were enjoying the party by now. The best move of the match saw Steve Staunton sending in a wicked cross. Milosevic's effort was saved. Ian Taylor headed home the rebound. And Villa Park duly celebrated. Just about everything was going Villa's way. Milosevic and Townsend combining. And the Serbian collecting his second goal via a fortunate deflection off Blackwell. Villa's biggest win of the season was duly rounded off when Sasha Churchick supplied the cross and Dwight York the finish. Villa elated, the Dons definitely deflated. Liverpool to kick off and in this first half they'll be attacking the Gallagher end and this is Collymore straight from the kickoff. Fowler with a chance and Peacock just got back in the nick of time. In fact, the flag is up on this near side, presumably for offside. Ginola to take the free kick. Ferdinand, Shearer. Newcastle have the advantage. Shearer poaching as so often. McManaman. Bjornaby. McManaman calling for it. And McManaman getting it. Two in the centre. Fowler, 1-1. Leadership of the Premiership is becoming something of a hot potato these days. Liverpool, in front of the biggest Anfield crowd this season, are the latest side finding it too hot to handle. Leicester gave them quite a scare when Lennon's shot was blocked. The tireless Steve Claridge curled his effort inside the post. At last, Liverpool roused themselves from their seasonal doze. Their best move of the match presented Stan Collymore with a chance he dare not and didn't miss, but not a convincing display. Another fruitless journey up the M1 for Arsenal. Defeat in Nottingham, followed by a blank Sheffield against a well-organised Wednesday. Dennis Bergkamp drew most of the plaudits, but his cushioned layoff was squandered by David Platt. In the second half, when the Dutchman showed the striker's instinct to drop off his marker, the header only left a mark on the post. The chance to close on Liverpool deflected away. Newcastle United's hangover has nothing to do with Christmas. They've had it for weeks. At Ewood Park, Alan Shearer was back on familiar ground, but it was Rovers who stole the show and the points. Bohinen's shot cleared off the line by Elliott, but Kevin Gallagher scrambling the ball home. Player manager is no easy role at the best of times. When Manchester United are in harmony, it can be well nigh impossible. At the city ground, Stuart Pearce's defence was shredded by Ole Solskjaer and Eric Cantona to allow David Beckham to open the scoring. There was never any question that United might just stop at one. Down the left again they came, Ryan Giggs cross reached Beckham, who passed on the invitation to Paul Scholes. The rebound reached Nicky Butt. 2-0. And that was only the warm-up. The second half was time for the party tricks. A pass with Beckham's signature, a contribution autographed by Cantona, a header by Solskjaer, his fifth goal in six games. It hasn't been a vintage season for the French philosopher, but the signs of revival are not to be ignored. Nor is the little Norwegian's predatory instinct. After that, they sent the artful dodger out to pick a pocket or two. Andy Cole had been a long time absent, but he hadn't forgotten how it's done. Nine goals in two games have jumped United up to third. Villa's boxing day was as flat as leftover champagne. They were undone by a clinical Italian job. First Gianfranco Zola's deflected shot caught everyone out, particularly the stranded Mark Bosnich.
Five minutes later, Bosnich went walkabout when he should have collected Nelson's back header. Zola nipped in, and egg was smeared on the Australian goalkeeper's face. But Villa not letting one defeat spoil their recent good patch. There was a bit of an old boys' reunion at Elland Road, though the welcome back to Gordon Strachan and company looked distinctly cool when Ian Rush robbed Dion Dublin and Brian Dean struck home an early goal. At least this one wouldn't be nil-nil like Leeds' last three. Maybe, though, they'd have preferred another stalemate to being savaged by an old mate. Gordon Strachan spent a lot of money on an unproven Darren Huckabee, but goals like that suggest he's not a bad judge. Then Leeds were caught smouldering over a corner they thought shouldn't have been given. Dion Dublin was concentrating. Defensive duties haven't diminished his scoring potential. Next, Huckabee had another run. He's strong and he's quick, too quick for Carlton Palmer. The last penalty Gary McAllister scored on this ground went past Peter Schmeichel. Nigel Martin fared no better. And that's how it stayed through a goalless second half. The Southampton manager, Graham Souness, was scathing about his side's defensive display at White Hart Lane. We were in a Christmas mood, he said. Certainly Spurs' first goal proved the point rather well. Steve Carr's cross sailing through the Saints' defence. Eventually, Stefan Everson finished off a rather soft goal. Spurs capitalised on more Southampton generosity. When Sinton lobbed Besant, the ball landed again at the feet of Everson. He accepted his second gift. But Southampton gave their fans a glimmer of hope. Matthew Letizia's controlled finish exposed a few Tottenham defensive frailties. But Spurs' third was decisive. Alan Nielsen's powerful header from Carr's free kick made it game, set and match. This wasn't a pretty game. Sunderland lost Kevin Ball for a month with a broken jaw. But they took the points, a second-half corner met by Richard Ord. That soothed the wound a little, and it was consolation for the man who was sent off when Derby won at the baseball ground in September. Then Craig Russell moved determinedly onto Paul Bracewell's pass and sent Derby on the way home, contemplating a return of only one point from four games. It's been a long time since Borough fans had much to smile about, but Boxing Day restored faith in their team. The Brazilians, Juninho and Emerson, helped create their first, dispatched with a plum by Craig Hignett. But in true Borough fashion, good was followed inexplicably by bad, Derek White handling in the box. Closer examination makes him a candidate for volleyball, not football. David Unsworth swept in the penalty, and the Riverside Stadium wondered if it was to be the same old story. But Borough restored their lead from an unlikely source. Clayton Blackmore back from a loan spell at Bristol City, curling in their second. Everton duly responded with a classic equaliser. Duncan Ferguson's towering header showing exactly why Middlesbrough leaked goals quite so alarmingly. The stage was set for the Riverside's favourite son to score his first league goal since early September. Juninho's first effort was blocked, but the little Brazilian followed it up and Teesside duly celebrated. Juninho was now finding the space he once enjoyed on the Brazilian back streets, terrorising the Everton defenders. A neat one-two with Ravanelli and Burra were home and dry. Defensively dodgy, but going forward, a joy to watch. Steve Lee.